Good morning, good morning and happy Easter. How wonderful to be gathering together. Cross Beverson, Long Newton, Shipton Moyne, Tetbury and with our lovely friends in Christ from near and far, gathering together for this worship on this Easter morning. All are welcome. I'm Poppy, I'm parish priest here and uh, leading the worship this morning with Pauline, our curate, and Pauline's had a very special experience of Holy Week and our special prayers this morning, I know, for this Easter day. I'll just hand over to her now to explain. Good morning, Poppy. Good morning, everyone. A very happy and blessed Easter to you all on this beautiful morning as we come from, as R.S. Thomas put it, unfathomable darkness to unfathomable light. So my first Lent and Easter with you all has indeed been very, very special. And I just feel totally blessed to be ministering amongst you. I really do. I think we've observed Lent so meaningfully here um, in the Benefice this time, not just in our worship, but also in our Lent groups, which has meant a lot to me and I know to many of you. And what powerful liturgy we have had culminating in that glorious Easter vigil and the Easter fire last night with Holy Communion. I am, I have to say, I am totally in awe of the work that Poppy, our rector, has put in. I think you would all agree into preparing the services this week. It's been a tour de force, Poppy, and thank you. We all thank you so much for that, leading us on this journey to Easter Day with such beautiful worship holding us together in community. And thanks to, to our wonderful technical support, to John and, and Neville and Matt as well. In our own isolation, we have walked that, that lonely and sorrowful, sorrowful road with Christ this week. And we've also been walking alongside some of those struggling in our own community. As we've been involved with the diocese and the Long Tables Easter project, supplying meals and hot cross buns this week to, to be enjoyed today with our love. Little bags of food have been distributed and Michelle very kindly also put in some, some Easter eggs and Easter cards with love from us all. So I'm very grateful to the Thomas Tallboys Trust uh, for funding the meals for the school families who are struggling and to the Holiday at Home team as well for their generosity to others in our community. It's been an amazing team effort. Thank you so much. Thanks to Michelle and to Brian and Sue who distributed, helped us distribute the meals and, and I have to say thank you to John and Diana who provided Frankie's freezer without which we could not have stored those 100 meals. Uh, uh, there was something very special about sharing out those meals on Maundy Thursday. So now, may I remind you that everyone will be on mute for the duration of this service, except for the usual times when we greet each other at the peace and when we say our goodbyes. Do use the chat facility, particularly following the prayers of intercession, and use the gallery button so that you can see everybody who's joined here in this community today. And be aware that sound levels will vary, so just adjust the volume as you need to. And so this glorious Easter morning, as we greet the risen Lord, it is a blessing to be able to greet each other. For although we are dispersed, we are gathered together in one spirit. So we begin, begin by opening our mics to greet one another. Christ is risen. Alleluia. <laughs> Christ is Peace, 
Oh, wonderful greetings. Happy Easter. Thank you to Pauline. I didn't know she was going to say that, but it's wonderful to hear about that sharing of meals. And uh, God bless all those people who will be sharing in those meals today. And so we gather and we hear the message of our great hope our great hope in our risen Lord. The journey that we've shared, we know Christ offers his very life for the life of the world. And wherever his life touches, becomes alive, even death. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is not an afterthought or a solution to a problem. When perfect love and the divine and infinite life, when that touches death, even death itself has no choice but to come alive. So whenever we find ourselves in God-forsaken darkness of sorrow and loss, Jesus meets us there. And when he does, our darkness meets the light of life and our life is restored. Not once, but over and over through our life here on earth and by God's grace through all eternity. This is our Easter hope. As we share this this morning, we begin with the words of the greeting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we go to John for our first reading. The reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows not, no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were, who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. 
But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you to John and to Hazel. So we're coming to our first hymn where we share words sung by St. Martin's Voices. I've had a lovely image of us each in our homes and we'll be on mute. We can't hear each other, but we know that God hears us. And so we sing together, Jesus Christ is risen today. In our gospel reading this morning, we hear of the incredulity of those first visitors to the tomb and Mary's encounter with the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, 
They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voices but your own, so that we may hear your word and also do it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our text. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. It is, I think, one of the most heart-stopping moments of the New Testament accounts. Mary Magdalene, who of course was among the women who stood at the foot of the cross, they watched and waited as Jesus died. And then they would have waited with his lifeless body hung on the cross for those hours before it was taken down in the early evening. Now, on the first day of the week, which is the first opportunity which the law allows, Mary hurries to the tomb to do all that she can, which is to care for the body of Christ. Her Easter begins with cruel bewilderment. She comes to the tomb, finds it empty. This cruel bewilderment added to her grief beyond words. Who could have done this? Where have they laid him? 
her words of despair echo the song of songs. I sought him who my soul loves. I sought him, but found him not. Then she turns to the one standing beside her. The first time to hear those, that gentle question, woman, why are you weeping? She turns that first time unknowing, unrecognizing. And then Jesus speaks her name, Mary. And turning again, she greets her beloved Lord, risen, released in the night. I wonder, as I look at you all, I wonder how you're doing on this Easter morning. As we reflect on Mary's experience of her first Easter morning, I wonder, where are you? Have you been looking forward to the dawning of this day? Did your heart wake singing, Jesus Christ is risen today? Does this morning simply complete your joy? Or does it feel more complicated and confusing? Elizabeth Hall in her reflection in New Daylight asks, does this seem like a jarring contradiction to how life is right now, not in harmony with our current experience? And that's okay, because that's certainly how it is in the Gospels. That's certainly the experience of the resurrection for those first disciples. I love the fact that Jesus doesn't hire the, the equivalent of a first century Palestine football stadium and get thousands of people gathered together and then do the big reveal, the dramatic, here I am. He doesn't do that. He meets his disciples one by one. He goes to encounter them where they are. He gives them what they need in that moment. Over the coming weeks of Eastertide, we will hear these accounts one by one. On the road to Emmaus, bringing comfort and reassurance. In the upper room, peace. At the Sea of Tiberias, that wonderful picnic to feed and sustain. To each one, bereaved, dismayed, terrified, anxious, utterly discouraged, disappointed. And then of course, our wonderful Thomas. You can sense his frustration. He is surrounded by people who are rejoicing in the resurrection and he wants it to be true, but he hasn't experienced it for himself. Why can't I feel like that too? Until our Lord comes to him with his hands open in love. See and believe. So maybe you're skipping about this morning like these, those lovely newborn lambs, but maybe not. Because that's how the resurrection is. Our faith has been shaken over this past year. It's been disruption to everything that we humanly imagine and expect and think we control. It's okay to wonder this morning, where is God? What can I imagine and expect in him? This morning, in all that we may be feeling, perhaps joy, perhaps bereaved, dismayed, terrified, anxious, discouraged, disappointed, confused, being gentle, with ourselves. Jesus doesn't demand anything of us. He certainly doesn't demand a forced act of will 
to feel the joy. He simply waits with us. He speaks our name in love and he gives us space to turn, to turn and to know him. And in that moment, to feel our hearts rise in joy, to know and to recognize him as our risen Lord. Amen. In a moment, we're going to share in our reflection. And uh, during the reflection, you'll be seeing pictures of some of the Easter gardens which people have made. Before we do that, I'm just going to share one other picture that arrived last night. We didn't have time to include it. I just wanted to show you, and I hope this works. Sure. So first of, oh, oh, first of all, <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's Claire, lovely Arwen. Look, Arwen's hiding in her bunny ears. <laughs> Arwen, thank you so much for this beautiful, beautiful, as you say, a modern interpretation. And I'm just going to show the empty tomb, just the other one, because let's just enjoy this. There we are. There's that empty tomb. Thank you, Arwen. Thank you. Thank you you in your bunny ears so that beautiful interpretation of the empty tomb oh. <laughs> it's wonderful what a joy to share that and now a little bit more joy as we listen together to um handles from handles messiah the alleluia chorus
on this Easter morning, brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess together the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now the Christ who comes to us where we are offers his peace in our lives and we extend that peace to one another. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also and with, with you. you. <clears throat> Let's all unmute and share peace together. Peace be with you. 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 Pe
we pray for the leaders of the nations. We pray that they may lead in ways that bring in the kingdom inaugurated through the resurrection that in your power they may bring food to the hungry, work to the unemployed, shelter to the homeless and refugees. And we pray that as your justice develops, threats, violence and war may cease through all the world. In particular at this time, we ask that they may lead away from vaccine nationalism to a truly global perspective. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for those who are ill, disabled, lonely and despairing that Christ's presence may be revealed in their darkness. For the dying and the bereaved, especially those remembering Joyce Mosdell and Belinda Drew, we ask for comfort, peace and strength. For those separated by restrictions from family and friends, we pray that there may be joyful reunions in the near future. For all of us who at some time will have to face our own mortality, we ask that we may be confident in the hope of resurrection. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. And we continue in prayer with the prayers which are on your hearts and your minds at this time. We are asked to pray for Cami and William as they move into their new home. May God be with them in their new place. Pray for church communities are targeted for their faith. We pray particularly for the church in Indonesia, attacked as people prayed last Sunday, last Palm Sunday. We pray for those injured. We ask your pardon and forgiveness for the suicide bombers. Lord, they know not what they do. We ask to pray for all those who were with us at this time last year and no longer with us. They rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for the people of Myanmar, for Syria, for Yemen, all places where there is strife at this time. We pray for our children and our grandchildren that they may know the true meaning of Easter. Asked to pay, pray for Pat's dad, John, who is so confused in his dementia. Please, Lord, bring him peace. Pray for those killed and injured in the train crash in Taiwan, for their grieving families. Pray for all care home residents who are now receiving visits from loved ones and the joy that they must be experiencing. Pray for our school communities, for our teachers and all the staff. Pray that they may find rest during the holiday after this, this most difficult of terms. We pray for those families who are struggling in cramped spaces with little income. 
and we give thanks for the Grace Network and those involved at the long table, giving thanks for the meals they produce so that people might sit and eat together this Easter day. We join our prayers together saying, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to ask by Claire to also pray for her mum, who is so determined to hold and care for Dad with his Alzheimer's, but so, so tired. With strength and love carry her. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now rejoicing in God's new creation as Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So wonderful to be sharing this worship together. We make our worship together by gathering in this way and with the support, of course, of Jonathan for the music, St. Martin's Voices, Neville for fantastic hosting, to John for the reading and Ian for prayers, for Pauline with all that she shared in ministry this morning. Thank you. In a moment, we'll have a blessing and our final hymn, Thine Be the Glory. And then if you are able to, do please stay uh, to join in our virtual coffee time. We will have a chance to go into little groups and to chat and catch up with each other on this Easter morning. And if you've not tried it, just sit tight at the end and we'll be with you and uh, give it a go. But before all of that, let's just unmute everyone and use that original form of um, goodbye. Here we go on the video. Go on, use go on. You. There you are. God be with you. 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 Yes, we now have Easter responses to lift up us, lift our hearts as we go out and on from this place. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise God and the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. 
God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this Easter day and always. Amen. We are raised to new life with Christ. Go in his peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, Neville. That was great. Yeah, you're very welcome. Had such a really lovely start to Easter Day. I hope you all have a really blessed rest of the day. It's been really good to see you. Um, Poppy's had to dash off, as she said, to, to do Holy Communion, I think, at Beverston. So shall we just have one more last God be with you, and then we'll listen to the lovely music at the end again. God be with you. Happy Easter to you all. Happy Easter to you. God be with you. Bye. 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 Bye.